So, Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu was supposed to end back in 2012, and what is the best way to lure fans back to the show? Easy, with a love triangle, and with not having the Ultra Dragon. How's it going on everybody, it's me, the one that loves cartoons, and in today's video, well, I'm gonna be talking about cartoons. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu Season 3, titled Rebooted. And you know what this season did? It said, let's forget about all the impact that Season 2 had, with the final battle, and with the good versus evil, and that Season 2 is gonna be the big final fight. And you know what this season did? This season bring back the Overlord. Yeah, this season bring back the Overlord. I guess the prophecy was wrong after all. So season three, season three is the revival of Ninjago since the show was originally gonna end with season two, known as the final battle. But since Lego wanted the money, the show was revived in 2014 because uh. Actually, Lego Chima was gonna replace this show, so the fans wanted the show to come back. So Ninjago, Ninjago came back with the season titled Rebooted. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna review each episode, and then I'm gonna be talking about the good stuff, the bad stuff, and then I'm gonna give this season a score out of ten. So let's review. So episode 27, which is the season premiere, titled The Surge, and in this episode. We get to see the citizens rebuilding Ninjago City and transforming it into new Ninjago City and you better enjoy you better enjoy new Ninjago City as long as you can cuz after this season you won't see new Ninjago City. So, we go to the ninjas and they are teaching at Lloyd's school, his old school and now it's called Sensei Wu's Academy. So the ninja are bored Nia gave them the news that they were invited to Borg's Tower, so they went to New Ninjago City with the bus and a kid asked Cole about the, the, about the Ultra Dragon. And uh, a kid asked Cole about the Ultra Dragon and Cole didn't respond. So the ninja arrived, Zane met and Zane met Pixel and he had a crush on her. I'm wondering if Zane would have a crush on Pixel if he didn't find out that he's a robot. That's actually a good question. So then uh, ninja, the ninja met Borg and he gave them a gift and Cole thought it was a cake but it's not. It's a golden statue. So Cyrus Borg tells Kai to protect them, so the statue fall and they get new suits and uh, the Technoblades, so they, were the so they wear the suits but the Technoblades doesn't work. And Zane said this. So Zane hacked the copter and it be and it became the ninja copter so he hacked that copter so we could buy this so Nia used a love machine that will tell her who is her perfect match and uh, the machine tells her I mean shows her that Cole is her perfect match Cole is her perfect match so the ninja used the techno blades and uh, they get their vehicles and uh, Lloyd shows up with his dragon and we discover that the overlord is alive. So the ninja escaped but Wu was kidnapped. So it's a good premiere. It really set up a lot of stuff. So we go to episode 28 titled Art of the, S of the Silent Fist. So we get to see Garmadon Ballot in his good form. And really you could see the difference between his design and his, desi and his design. 
in the final episode of season 2. You can see the difference. So Zane find out that Pixel was trying to steal the Technoblade and the Nindroids shows up and they are really cool. So after that we get introduced into Nia's Samurai Cave and Lloyd and Garmadon went on their own. Went on their own because Lloyd is on the run now. So we get a moment between Zane and Pixel and Nia admits to Cole that she is in love with him. And uh, Cole loves her back. So they become together in this episode. But secretly. So the ninja shut down the power so we go to episode 29 titled Blackout. So the ninja are in Ed and Edna's junkyard. So Zane gives the half of his power source to Pixel and she wakes up and they become together. And the Jay find out that Nia's perfect match is Cole and that she she is in love with Cole and Jay start fighting Cole without even talking to him or asking him about what is going on. So Pytho So a mysterious guy shows up and and he took the hard drive. So the overlord is on. And the mysterious guy is powering him using Electro Cobras. So the Nindroids attack the junkyard so they could take the deck the techno blades. So they can't clean so the ninja won't clean the system. And erase the overlord. So the mysterious guy turns Sensei Wu into Evil Wu, aka Techno Wu, aka Black Beard Wu. So Evil Wu and uh, the mysterious guy failed and he left a white scale so they think he is a serpentine and you can kinda you can kinda put the pieces together together and find out who who is the mysterious guy i mean who survived from the devourer and how the other snake didn't survive from the devourer it doesn't make sense so it's spiteful so they find out the location of Garmadon and Lloyd. So we go to episode 4, which is a slow episode in my opinion. And it kind of broke the canon. I mean, the ninja met the snakes. And uh, how did they know that, that the snakes are under the sewers? It doesn't make sense. So why I said it broke the canon? Well, they tell us that when the first Spinjitzu master created create Ninjago, he created the first snake. So yeah, that is good. I like that. And uh, they tell us that the snake had a future vision about the golden master. So yeah, that that is cool. I like what they did. So that is cool. I like the direction that, that they're going in. But then they tell us... When humans didn't listen to the Serpentine's warning about the Golden Master, the Serpentine wanted to free the Great Devourer so they could scare them. Cause they didn't took their warning seriously. Cause the humans didn't took their warning seriously. But here's the problem. I thought that the snakes released the Great Devourer so they could have their revenge. Cause the humans trapped them in, in their tombs, right? That's what we got in Season 1. That's what they did tell us. That's what they did tell us. But in season 3, they tell us that they released the Great Devourer so they could scare them. So they could, so they could scare the humans because they weren't afraid from their warning about the Golden Master. And also, they said that they, the snakes, the snakes said that they decided to go back underground. But in season 2, they were trapped underground. I mean, they... They were trying to create an earthquake, remember? In uh, episode 20? Ah, uh, 21, I mean. And they were they were trapped because of the stone armies. I mean, they defeat them. What, like when Scales was leading uh, the, the snakes. So why they said in this story that they wanted to hide from the Golden Master? Because they tell that they wanted to go underground. Because they were afraid from the Golden Master. So... So yeah, that flashback story broke the canon in my opinion. I don't know, maybe I, I get it wrong. If you guys like get that uh, story, and uh, you, you can guys tell me in the comments. I really, I really want a little explanation because it doesn't make sense. So Nindroids shows up, the ninja took them down, and then Evil Wu and the, the mysterious guy captured Lloyd. And the mysterious guy turned out to be the mailman. 
The mysterious guy turned out to be Pythor. So they took Lloyd so the overlord could have his powers and he could have his physical body so he could turn himself into the golden master so despite this episode was slow and uh, kinda broke the canon i really liked that we get uh, to understand the overlord's plan so we get to episode 31 titled enter the digiverse well full digital would have been a much better title so we learned that cyrus Borg created the digiverse which is a video game version of Ninjago City and that the ninja must go inside the digiverse so they could strike the source and clean the system since the overlord uh, has taken control and Zane's power source will help them to get inside the, dig the digiverse so the ninja went inside the digiverse and the overlord was stealing Lloyd's powers Lloyd's golden powers but then he discovered that the ninja are inside so the overlord the overlord could control the digiverse he is in control and what does he do well he tried to trap the ninja with his own version of a quicksand i feel like saying that out loud is weird so pixel helps them and uh, then uh, the ninja used the techno blades to clean the system but then the overlord stopped them so zane used his imagination so he could turn himself into a golden ninja so everyone copied zane and uh, they cleaned the system so we get to Sensei Garmadon and Evil Wu, and then Evil Wu became Good Wu. So Garmadon and Good Wu get back to the tower and the Overlord survived. So we go to episode 32 titled Codename Arcturus. So Lloyd gives what is left of his golden powers to the four main ninja. So that is cool, the ninja finally get their powers. And uh, then uh, Zane and Pixel discover discovered a code name Arcturus and that is the Nindroid's plan so Kai go in his on his solo mission using the X1 ninja charger but he was kidnapped and they used his half mask to put it on his mouth so he can't talk what so Cole Nia and the J are in a double date so Nia could choose between them but she didn't she didn't know which one to choose so Pixel didn't find out any clue about the code name Arcturus, but about the code name Arcturus. But Zane tells her that she can't find out anything because the code name Arcturus has something to do with the ninja travel traveling back in time in the episode Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which is episode 19 of season two. So Jay and Cole remember. Lloyd didn't remember since he didn't travel to back in time with them. But somehow, somehow. Nia remembers what but but Nia also didn't went with them in that episode so how she could remember and how the overlord know about the golden weapons being in space and listen wrong place wrong time did retcon a lot of stuff I mean the the golden weapon the golden weapons exploded in that episode but in season three they retconned it so the golden weapons didn't get destroyed and they didn't get destroyed in the sky but they went to space so yeah I might do a video talking about uh, wrong place wrong time and uh, how it didn't make sense and yeah no promises so they so they find out that the nindroids study the star and the lost city of Ouroboros so they went there they saved Kai but they failed to stop the the rockets so they went into space and Garmadon and Goodwu hope that the ninja will come back and man what a cliffhanger I really liked how the episode ended so we go to episode 33 titled the void so the ninja are in space and Zane went outside the the rockets so he could bring to them the spacesuits so they so they fight they get the, the they get the spacesuits so they fight some nindroids and they ended up on a planet but somehow that planet has gravity well uh, okay so the ninja went inside the spaceship but they didn't find the key so they took one of the vehicles and they took the key but some alien bugs destroyed the ship and the nindroids took the golden weapons that are fused with the mega weapon so they went back to earth and uh, the ninja are stuck in space so we go to episode 34 
titled the titanium ninja which is my favorite episode from this season and you guys definitely know why so the ninja build their own rocket and they went back to earth they went to a temple which was the overlord's temple and it was used to defend himself against the first spinjitzu master so the ninja went there and uh, and Cyrus Borg gave them a weapon that could defeat the overlord and it's a pill so good Wu and garmadon know how they could throw it to his mouth so they get the stone armor suits so good Wu and uh, garmadon throw the pill but pythor was uh, hungry so he jumped to eat it i feel like i should stop saying good Wu. so let's go back Sensei would throw the pill, but Pythor was hungry, so he jumped to eat it, and he became so small. So the overlord captured the ninja except for Zane, so Zane jumped to sacrifice himself. And we had this amazing scene that made me cry when I was 9 years old, and I'm serious. That scene was heartbreaking, and the soundtrack was really good. It was really good. It's called uh, Build to Protect, and man, that scene was emotional to every Ninjago fan and to me. I mean we get to see some past moments during Zane's sacrifice like some moments from season 1 and some moments from season 2 so and some scenes with his father I mean th that was really that was really emotional and it was unexpected I mean no one thought that Zane was gonna sacrifice himself so and uh, yeah Zane was destroyed alongside the overlord so the ninja we're all sad and uh, Cole and Nia did end up together kinda I mean they were hugging at the end like when they were hugging so she chose Cole right I mean they were hugging when the Zane was dead right they become together so we get to Zane's funeral using his image from the intro so are the intros canon? But but the intros are intros. I mean they should not be they should not be canon. <clears throat> so Kai gave a good speech about what powered Zane and uh, everyone was sad in in that funeral. Like every character. I mean I was sad, especially me. I mean watching that funeral was really heartbreaking. And we get to Pixel and Zane rebuilt himself. That's the end of the season so let's talk about the good stuff so the nindroids were really good I mean they feel like a threat to the ninja they feel like a, they feel like a threat to the ninjas and uh, the overlord was good I enjoyed him much better than he was in season 2 and uh, I liked Cyrus Bork he was a really good side character in this season and uh, Dareth was good as usual and the vehicles are really good in this season and uh, pixel was good and seeing pythor back was good and uh, i liked that plot twist about him being the mysterious guy and evil Wu was good he was cool sensei garmadon was really really good and sensei Wu was good so let's talk about the ninjas so we have zane and uh, he is the main focus of this season and uh, he was really good in this season he was well developed and I liked his relationship with Pixel and his sacrifice was an amazing scene. But at the same time, but at the same time, heartbreaking to watch. So we go to Lloyd and he was also good. I really liked his relationship with Garmadon, his father. And uh, he was on the run in the second and third and fourth episode. So that was good to watch. And uh, Cole and Jay, well, I feel like most of their moments were, is when they, they were fighting over Nia. And I'm going to talk about this love triangle later in this video. So we go to Kai. And uh, Kai, Kai is the only one in this season that didn't have an arc. I mean, Zane was the focus and we get to see his relationship with Pixel. And uh, Lloyd was on the run and we saw his relationship with his father. And Jay and Cole were fighting over Nia. But Sky didn't get an arc. But despite he didn't get an arc, he was still good. And he had that final moment in episode 34 when he gave that speech about Zane. 
So yeah, he was the most affected about Zane's uh, death. So Kai was good. He was still containing his personality. He was still containing his personality. And he he got that solo mission. I mean, with the X1 Ninja Charger. So yeah, I didn't have a problem with him. Kai wasn't a problem. He was really good in this season. I really liked his character. And uh, I liked seeing the Overlord in his Golden Master form. He was really good. And seeing Scales back was really good. And I liked seeing them go in inside the digiverse in episode 31 and seeing them in space was something fresh and new in ninjago and i liked that uh and uh, i liked when they bringed the wrong place wrong time episode so good continuity despite that episode destroyed continuity if you get it and yeah i guess this is all i have to say for the good stuff so let's go to the bad stuff so I feel like this season is over the place. I mean, we had three endings in this season. I mean, the ninja shut down the power in episode 28. So there is no overlord. Well, at least for for some moments. But then he was back because Pythor find a way to power the hard drive. And then the ninja cl cleaned the system in episode 31, entered the digiverse. But the overlord survived at the end because two season three had three endings that is too much and uh, also despite i liked the overlord despite i liked the overlord in this season i feel like bringing him back was a bad move i mean we saw in season two lloyd destroying him i mean the prophecy in season two was for lloyd to kill the overlord the prophecy was for Lloyd to kill the Overlord, so I feel like bringing, I feel like bringing the Overlord back made the final battle pointless, and it retconned the prophecy. I mean, season two was like this big fight between good and evil, and the prophecy said that Lloyd must defeat the Overlord, but he was back. So the pro, you see, like they 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 forget about the prophecy. Like I said, season 2 was like gonna be the big fight between good and evil. So having the Overlord back was a bad move. I mean, we saw Zane defeating him in season 3, in this season, and not Lloyd. So the prophecy was wrong, or I don't think it was wrong. I feel like they just forget about it and they retconned it. Just like how they did with the, with the snake story. I mean, in this season, they were trying to make the Overlord the biggest bad guy. In season 2, they were trying to make the Overlord this biggest bad guy. And we saw Lloyd defeating him. So season 2 was gonna be this big climax. Since season 2 was gonna be the end. It makes... So, it makes the return of the Overlord bad. And it makes... The prophecy pointless. It makes season two pointless. I mean, they could have had another villain instead. So yeah, and uh, I didn't like how the Serpentine story broke the canon. I just said, I just said that they they kind of retconned it. I mean, yeah, I didn't like how the Serpentine story broke the canon. I mean, they said in episode thirteen that they released the Great Devour because the humans didn't took their warning seriously about the curse of the golden master because it wasn't the case in season 2 no in season 2 I mean the snakes wanted to resurrect the great devourer so they could have their revenge because the humans trapped them in their tombs and also they tell us that they wanted to go underground they tell us that the snake wanted to go underground because they were afraid that one day the golden master will arrive but in season 2 it wasn't the case they were trapped underground it, they didn't want to go underground they were trapped underground and it's not them that wanted to go underground I mean in season 2 they were trying to create an earthquake so the humans will fall underground so the snakes could take over the surface so they really changed a lot of stuff like I said, I don't know, maybe I didn't get that story, so if you guys like get it, please just tell me in the comments. 
explained it to me because I don't know, maybe I didn't get it, but I feel like they retconned it. I really feel like they retconned it. So yeah, just tell me in the comments if uh, if they actually retconned it or if I actually I or if I actually didn't get that story. So and uh, I feel like Zane didn't get that much. Don't get me wrong, Zane had a really good development in season three, but I feel like. He didn't get that much, I mean, in the season premiere, he had that moment with Pixel, when he falls in love with her, but other than that, that moment and that episode, he was treated just like the other ninjas, and in the second episode of this, of season 3 of this season, he had more development, and he wasn't treated more moments, but I mean, we get to see him of his power source, of his heart, yeah, he was really good in that episode. But then we get to episode 4 of the season and he had some few moments in that episode but other than that he was treated like the others in the majority of the episode. And in episode 5 enter the digiverse well he was treated just like the others but then in the final moments he was focused a little bit. I mean he became gold and he had the idea of defeating the overlord inside the digiverse but yeah. He wasn't like the main focus of that episode. And same goes on with codename Arcturus. He was treated just like the others in the entire episode. And uh, in episode 7, the Void, well he had some moments when he went to save the others with giving them their space suits. Like when he went outside the ship in, in space. But yeah, other than that, he was treated just, he was treated just like the others. Just like the other four ninjas. And the majority of the episode and in the final episode well he wasn't that focused in the first and two acts but he was focused in the last act when he sacrificed himself so yeah i wish zane get more moments in this season i mean yeah we should take a break from a focused character and yeah i get it because uh, I, I get it but since this season is only eight episodes then it's not the right time to forget about the focus character. I feel like other stuff like a love triangle and uh, they kind of foreshadowed Zane a little bit. And also, what is his power source? I mean, they don't explain. They don't explain it to us. Yeah, it powered Zane. We know that. But what is Zane's power source? I mean, in episode twenty-eight, Art of the Silent Fist. When Pixel saw his power source, she tells him that she never saw something like it before. Like, despite how Pixel is, like, much better than Zane, like, uh, she is new, Zane's old. So, and uh, Zane's power source did change Pixel's personality, I mean, in the first two episodes. She was acting like a robot, but when Zane gives her the half of his power source, her personality changed. I mean, she starts caring about Zane and she starts to have feelings. So yeah, and also Zane's power source did help Borg to teleport the ninjas into the Digiverse, I guess. I don't remember that much. I feel, yeah, Zane's power source did help Borg to teleport the ninja into the Digiverse. So what makes Zane's power source special? I mean, Cyrus Borg is a genius, but I feel like... I mean, all the technology that he had and uh, Zane's power source is something that, like, Pixel doesn't know about, and, yeah. I mean, it did help Borg to teleport the ninja into the Digiverse, but, like, since he's a genius, I mean, why it had to be Zane's power source, you see? So, what is Zane's power source? I mean, is it like a portal to the Digiverse? Is it a, a portal, a portal like Doctor Strange's portal? And it doesn't that doesn't make sense? So I really don't get it. I really don't get. I really don't get it. And when did Doctor Julian upgraded Zane? I mean, in season one and two, he was like this, and now he's like this. And if Doctor Julian was alive during season three, he could have explained what is special about his power source. So now we're so now we are gonna talk about the love triangle, and how stupid it is. So listen to me. Sometimes love triangles are good. I said sometimes. Huh? I feel like most of them are, are better are good in some TV shows, such as in regular show, kinda I think. Here and here in, uh, in Ninjago, it's horrible. So it started with Nia, 
who is her perfect match, and it's Cole. So Nia starts having a crush on Cole. So she, so she tells him that she loves him, and Cole loves her back. So they 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 are together. I mean, Nia forget about Jake and flirt with Cole. In that episode, so there was a lot of, so there was a lot of ideas about where this love triangle between Nia and Cole and Jake could go. I mean, we could see Cole and Nia go out secretly without Jay knowing, or Nia could tell Jay that she is done, that she's done with him, and now she's interested on Cole, because she was interested on Cole more than Jay in episode. 2028 20, so like i said this love this love story between nia and cole could have been much better but instead what they did is is that in the next episode we get to see jay finding out and he start fighting cole so the majority of the season was jay and cole fighting over nia instead of using these other ideas with this love triangle they went with this one and here's the thing that bothers me and it's that after Jay and Cole start fighting over Nia, Nia didn't know which one to choose. I mean, I don't get it. She had a crush on Cole on the previous episode. So, they kind of became official since she tells him that she loves him and that Cole loves her back. But in this episode, she doesn't know which one to choose. I mean, she should say Cole since she preferred him over Jay in that previous episode. So, like I said, the majority of that arc is Cole and Jay fighting over Nia. And Nia didn't know which one to choose. And also, it keeps going until the final episode where they kinda conclude that arc. I said kinda conclude that arc. With having Cole and Nia hugging. When they, when they find out that Zane is dead. So, she did prefer Cole over Jay. I mean, she hugged uh, Cole and she forgot about Jay. So, why, why she didn't said that she preferred Cole? When Jay and Cole asked her which one she preferred. So I really don't get what is going on. I really don't get what is going on on Nia's head. I don't know. I mean like we get to see Nia hugging Cole and Jay was left behind. So it kind of makes sense that she chose Cole. I feel like the Higman brothers are not good with love triangles. So I feel like they should do what they already knew. Because this love triangle is stupid and it doesn't make sense. And like I said, Nia kind of ended up with Cole in season 3 since she hugged him and Jay was left behind. But then in the next season, they forget about that scene. With the two of them hugging and having that scene like it never happened. And keeping up with Jay and Cole fighting over Nia and with Nia not knowing which one to choose. So yeah. And also, we had zero moment between Cole and Nia. I mean, yeah, we get that train scene, but other than that scene, we didn't have any moments between the two in this season. I mean, they never went on a date or something like that. So, she was Jay's girlfriend in two seasons, and she kind of became Cole's girlfriend. She kind of became Cole's girlfriend just in that one scene, which is which is the train scene. And now, we have a love triangle. I mean, what? So yeah, I wish we get more with Cole and Nia, so that will make this this story make a lot of sense. So yeah, they only had the train scene, cause other than that train scene, most of the season was Jay and Cole fighting over Nia. So the only moments between Cole and Nia is that train scene. I feel like when I'm saying the train scene, everyone is imagining the train scene from Spider-Man 2. Because that scene is iconic. So much iconic. So every time I'm saying it, I'm thinking about this instead of this. And yeah, and uh, I'm kind of confused that Kai doesn't have any information about this love triangle. I mean, Nia is, his, Nia is his sister. we never seen him talk to her about what is going on. Or talking to Jay and Cole about this love triangle. Kai was like, I'm out of this, Nia. You are all along. So you can say that this love machine had had a had a huge impact in the show, and I mean a huge impact. So yeah, I feel like this season is all. I feel like the this this season. I don't know what to say. So I feel like this is all I have to say about the bad stuff. So 
I give this season a 6.4 out of 10. I really, in, I really enjoyed the season, but despite that, season 3 is an okay season, in my opinion. This season has some flaws, such as the horrible love triangle, because we had the train scene between Cole and Mia. I was really wanting to see more. I was wanting to see where this love story is going, but it led to nowhere. And the execution was really, really, really bad. But this season had some good stuff, such, such as Zane's development and his sacrifice, and the ninjas were good. But the bad stuff, I, I can't forget about them. Not just the love triangle. And the... Uh, and some then the uh, some slow moments so tell me your thoughts in the comments what do you guys think of this season is it a good season is it a bad season is it an okay season uh i say it's an okay season i wish it was much better than than this some ex some execution were bad th such as that love story and uh, some retcons uh, but yeah I will still like the season. I mean, I don't hate the season. This season is is okay. I don't hate it, but I don't love it that much either. So if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, then subscribe. It will means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the one that loves cartoons, and you're the one that love it too.